Today we're going to be talking about six films, two minutes around for each film. There's been a bunch of movies that I've had to get caught up on recently and I finally have. So let's talk about some of those films right now. The first film on this list is A Family Affair. This is a Netflix film starring Zac Efron, Joey King, and Nicole Kidman. You would think with like Netflix and those three stars attached that this would be like an incredible rom-com film. But honestly, this is probably one of the most forgettable movies in a long time. Boo! Oh, boo. Nicole Kidman in this film is not even doing anything. She is just there on screen. In fact, out of all three main performances, Joey King actually steals the show. She's really funny and she does decently well with what she has to work with. But besides that, I think this is a film that just suffers from poor writing, poor character development, weird story plot line, only a couple of decent jokes told throughout it. But otherwise, it's a very forgetful film. Even though it's a movie about making movies, kind of, which I usually love, this is one that just couldn't quite pierce my heart. This is a movie to definitely not check out. Even if you have Netflix, you can find better stuff on there. This is definitely one to skip. So I'm gonna go ahead and give A Family Affair a C-. The next film is Fly Me to the Moon. This is a movie that I actually got to see in theaters, and I honestly had no desire to see this film. Then, in the movie theater, I was quite surprised actually. This is a fun little rom-com drama historical reenactment that mostly works and it's like if you take this movie as for what it is at face value I think you will actually enjoy this film. There's some great visuals in this. The story is interesting. The lead performance by Scarlett Johansson is great. The supporting cast around the main characters is really solid. It's a fun movie. It's a good time at the theaters. It's really cool to look at on the big screen. For me, the biggest issues with this movie is some of the revisionist of history that they kind of go down. You know, it seems a little bit ridiculous. 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 This class is ridiculous. Very good. Another thing is that this movie focuses a lot on the rom-com side of things. Like they definitely try and tell a love story in the midst of all this NASA and science and cool things that are going on. And that is also with like the Channing Tatum part. You know, he is this character um, who's head of NASA. And I just don't quite believe Channing Tatum as the launch director of NASA. Magic Mike is running NASA launch missions. And that makes it sound like I'm harping on Channing Tatum, but I actually think he's a great actor. I just don't know if this was his right role. Bro, I'm straight up not having a good time. And I mentioned that the love story does dominate a big portion of this film. And I think if they have trimmed out the love story, which ultimately wasn't that important in the end, I think if they just told the story of like the launching of Apollo 11 from the perspective of like trying to sell, you know, the landing of the moon to the American public and then, you know, getting that mission off its feet, the story of like having to maybe fake the moon landing, like all that was great. If they trimmed out the love story, this movie would have been a lot quicker and it would have had a way better runtime. Overall, I had a really good time with this movie. I was quite surprised. Yes, there's some definite issues with it, but I think this is worth watching. And if you don't see it in theaters, it's worth checking out on, you know, your home screen TV when it comes up on streaming. So I'm gonna go ahead and give Fly Me to the Moon a B minus. The next film is I Saw the TV Glow. If you are someone who's into, you know, like, 1990 films and TV shows and if you're just at your friend's house and you're watching in their basement a weird creepy TV show that you're not supposed to watch and they really capture that feeling of like nostalgia 90s extremely well this movie also takes you on a mind trip of a ride <laughs> I never quite knew in this film what was real and what was like a part of the TV show and what was happening. And if a movie can do that, I think it's pretty successful on some degree. Like you have to give it props. And then the story and how it unfolds and the characters as they're developed over the course of their life is haunting and beautiful and scary all at once. And people say this is a horror movie. I wouldn't say it's quite like a horror movie 
but it is definitely like a psychological thriller how visually striking and stunning this movie is too besides the amazing performances that from our really our two leads the cinematography in this film is stunning there's so many cool picturesque moments and vibrant colors yet it's still dark and gritty at times and i love the tone of this movie as well for me, some of the issues is in the storytelling devices and how they cut back and forth through time. And you're never really quite sure 100% what time frame you're in. And I understand why they're doing that, but it is a little bit jolting, this movie, and the way that it's edited and paced. And also, this movie is very purposefully ambiguous at the end. And it's left open to see like what you take out of this film and what is your interpretation. It is kind of like an inception, you know, top rolling. Is it rolling? Is it moving? I didn't get inception. I didn't get inception. And also this movie deals with some real heavy topics. It definitely deals with like depression and suicide. It is an allegory for the trans community. And there's a lot of depth and meaning to this movie. And I love that. But if you're not into that sort of film and filmmaking, this is, could be a movie that is difficult for you to swallow. I think it's a very interesting film. It is definitely worth a watch just to experience this movie. And I think you will overall have a really good time and you'll come out of this movie thinking about your life differently than when you went into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and give I Saw the TV Glow a B plus. The fourth film on this list is A Quiet Place, day one. I saw this movie on opening night and I meant to review it. I'm a big fan of the first Quiet Place movie. I thought it was great. It was one of the better horror films of that year. I love what John Krasinski did with those first two films. So the director for A Quiet Place, day one, Michael Sarnowski, wrote and directed the movie Pig with Nicolas Cage that came out a couple years ago and it was my favorite film of that year. This movie was really fun to see day one and the invasion of the aliens in this world. Invasion Day is really interesting and fun. It's set in New York City, which is so different from like the backwoods of Pennsylvania in the first two films. And the performances in this movie are really top notch, especially from Lupita Luongo, who is amazing in this film. Joseph Quinn was great as well. And they really do carry this film and propel it forward. There's a lot of emotionality in this film and great character depth. And that's very well done by Sarnowski. And you definitely feel like you're going through the experience what these characters are experiencing. And this is definitely a big expansion compared to the first two movies. It is definitely a bigger scale movie. Mostly this movie is pretty sweet. But for me, the biggest issue with this film is A, it's day one and these characters are, well, you just know that some of them are not gonna make it. Some of you may die. Because this movie is a prequel, it already loses its stakes and you can feel that in this film. It, it's sort of like Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Ultimately, it doesn't feel like there's high stakes because you already know what's gonna happen. In this film, it is well telegraphed. The other thing that I wish that this movie focused a little less on was character. I wanted to a much more invasion film and survival movie it could have edited the film a bit with a little bit more urgency i definitely do recommend a quiet place day one an excellent hollywood blockbuster horror thriller film so i'm gonna go ahead and give a quiet place day one a b plus as well the fifth film on this list today is snack shack finally got to watch it and i really enjoyed this film i am a big lover of the coming of age film uh, coming of age comedy drama sort of genre and this movie fits on my sweet tooth just perfectly it is very comedic it is hilarious at times it is also heartwarming and heart-wrenching and emotional got this real cool vibe being set in the 90s and it's set in the summertime as well at a pool of all things you just get that awesome you know early teenager sort of vibe and like 
you're wanting to be cool and you're exploring new things, but you're still like a kid emotionally and developmentally, but you're just on the cusp of becoming an adult and just all these cool things that are explored in this film. Yes, it does hit some of the same similar tropes that a lot of other coming of age films have done, but this movie does it so well that it does rise above the pack. It's not just like another mediocre coming of age movie. The performances are awesome from our two leads, but especially from Gabriel LaBelle. I thought his character Moose was so funny and just an asshole. One of those friends that you love to hate. And their dynamic throughout this film is so interesting to watch, like the ups and downs of it. And as they, you know, are really entrepreneurs, this movie about entrepreneurs and making money. So it feels like this movie's made for me. I love summer films. I love movies that have, you know, are set at like water parks. <sighs> the water park. I can't wait to get everyone else's body water in my mouth. The Way Way Back is one of my favorite coming of age films and that's like set in the summer at a water park. So this movie is kind of already in my wheelhouse. Yes, it's not like a perfect film, but I have to say overall, I really did enjoy this coming of age film. It is probably one of the better ones I've seen over the last three, four years. So I'm going to go ahead and give Snack Shack an A-. minus. And the last film on this list for today is Challengers. This is a film by Luca Guadagnino starring Josh O'Connor, Mike Feist, and Zendaya. I'm not like the biggest lover of Luca Guadagnino, but I'm going to say this right here, right now. Challengers is my favorite Luca Guadagnino film. That's impossible! I love that it's a sports tennis movie. It's a drama. It's a comedy. It's a little bit of a coming of age film. It's a sort of psychosexual romance a, a little bit. There's a love triangle. But the performances are just top notch. I loved what these three leads did in this film. Their chemistry is undeniable. The story between them, the tension that's created, as well as the fact that this is a sports movie and a tennis sports movie. I haven't seen tennis filmed on screen as good as in this film. This is one of the best tennis movies ever made. Some of the shots still are stuck inside of my brain like I can picture it I can picture the last you know 20 minutes of that film where they're playing back and forth at the tournament it is brilliant fun sort of tongue-in-cheek filmmaking I loved the soundtrack to this movie I downloaded it immediately after watching this film as I was coming out of the theater I downloaded it onto my phone the directing, cinematography is gorgeous at times. I think there is about 10 minutes of this film that could have been trimmed down. Some of the scenes linger a bit long. There's a little bit of fumbling of the ball. About an hour and 10, 15 minutes in, the film becomes a little unclear of what it's trying to say and do. But ultimately, it does get back on track. And like the first hour and 15 minutes of this film in the last like 20 minutes is amazing and if you combine that all together i really do think it makes one of the best films of this year the best of the best of the best sir <laughs> yeah, with honors this might be one of the best endings of a movie this year and maybe of the last like three or four years i thought it was so well executed if i'm looking at the body work of luca guadagnino overall i think this is his most stylish hollywood commercial yet still indie niche mixed together and it sort of fits the best of both worlds and yet it also doesn't take itself too seriously so you can just have a lot of fun with this movie as well it's a little weird and it, it might not be everyone's cup of tea but for me it hit almost all of the boxes that i'm looking for in a fun movie so i'm gonna go ahead and give challengers an a well, thank you so much for checking out Mr. Teach Film Preach. Let me know with your thoughts and comments down below. What did you think of these films? Which one is your favorite out of this list? What are you looking forward to and excited for the rest of this year? I would love to hear your thoughts and comments down below. Don't forget, if you like this video, click that like button and subscribe to my channel for more content and video reviews. Have a great day, everyone, and we'll see you on the next film.